Moving forward with our game, we have prepared our player character in the previous video and inside of this video we're quickly going to go here under the maps folder and inside here we have our game mode controller which is going to be our main dude, so this bad boy over here and he's already prepared, I mean just created and in order to create it you can just right click on it and you can go under here blueprint class and you're going to say game mode base. So he's going to be our default game mode controller. And why is that important? Well, here now we can go into the project settings and if you don't know where this is, it's under edit and project settings and then it will open this tab and then you're going to go under maps and modes and here the default game mode is going to be our game mode controller. What this allows us to do is right here where it says the pawn class, the default one, who we want to spawn, we want to spawn our player character, this bad boy over here, the one that we have just created. So if I go now, we have here our player start, here is our player start as you can see over here. And if this all is new to you, you have opened this course in my academy right away and you did not know about Unreal Engine before this, then you should go and watch my introduction to Unreal Engine. For beginners which is the beginner course so that you understand all of this over here so if I click the play button now and we have our music as well so <laughs> sorry if that scared you man <laughs> it scared me as well <laughs> so I need to lower the volume a little bit but if I eject myself here is my main character who is now spawned over here so that is all all thanks to this right here so we selected the default game mode and now we selected the default pawn class which is our player character so now he is the one being spawned when we run our game now before we wrap this video up i'm also going to create the variables that we are going to need for our player and also here for the project settings we are going to create input action maps, mappings and axis mappings because in the next video we are going to start moving our character. So going over here inside of our variables I'm going to click here and we're going to need a gun offset variable and that is going to be a type of vector so I'm going to click here on type of vector. I'm also going to click on plus again so click on plus over here. We're going to have can perform action variable this is going to be a bool one so click here on this icon this little yet icon yellow icon and then select the boolean over here the next one is going to perform action time or the name of the variable is going to be perform action time like this this one is going to be a float so you can click on here and select float you can also click over here in the details tab so you can click on the drop down list and then from here you can select the type of the variable that we want also here I'm going to click on is dead like this and here we are going to select that to be a boolean. We also need elapsed level time so elapsed level, level time. This is going to tell us well how much time we have in the level and this is also going to be a float. We are also going to have use timer to denote if we are using timer in our game or not. So use timer, this one is going to be a boolean. So let's go over here, select it as a boolean. We are also going to have a dash interval, interval like this. This one is going to be a float and we are going to be able to dash when we press the left shift, which means we are going to like dash, just dash a few units inside of our game and this is going to be our dash timer we will see that that will be that is going to be very helpful for us to avoid the bullets from our enemies we're also going to have here can dash because we're not going to be able to dash every time and this can dash is going to be a boolean we are also going to have another boolean in volume this one is going to tell us if we are inside of the ammo box which is going to refill our ammo and speaking of ammo we are also going to have the current ammo and here I'm going to set that to be an integer. We are also going to have the maximum ammo, so max ammo that we are allowed to have and we are going to have a weapon index. I know it's tedious to write all of this down but that is part of game development as well. You cannot avoid it by any means. You can also, I mean, I can also say to you to rewind the video but I also explain things when we write we will need a couple of more variables we will see that later on when we start creating things but let's go here in the project settings and to create our action mapping so I'm going to click here and we're going to have one this is going to be for jumping I'm going to call it jump and we are going to trigger it when we press the space bar so click on here so if you click here you can 
filter here in the search tab space and select spacebar, which means when we press the spacebar, we will trigger this jump action mapping, which we will see in a moment or actually in the next video, how we're going to use it. I'm also going to click on this plus again, and we're going to have fire. This is for shooting. And this one is going to be on the right mouse button. So filter here, right mouse button, and also click here plus again. And we're going to ha have knife slash. And this one is going to be the left mouse button. So here we're going to say left mouse button here it is click on the left mouse button now for the action mappings here the first one that we're going to have is going to be move forward like this now for the move forward we are going to click on the keyboard and the w key so search here for the w key here it is click on the plus now not this plus over here but this plus over here because we're going to add another key to this move forward axis mapping, which means when we press the W key or when we press the S key, and let me just find the S key, that means we're going to trigger this move forward action or axis mapping. Now for the S over here, I am going to set it to be negative one because forward is positive, that's why it's one, and backwards is negative, that's why it is negative one. Now we're also going to click on the action mapping plus over here to add another, or actually, excuse me, axis mapping, to add another axis mapping. This one is going to be move right, okay? And on this one, we're going to have the A key and the D key. So here I'm going to filter for the A key and click on the plus here to add another action for this move right, or actually the trigger for it. Under keyboard, we're going to filter for D key here it is. Now for the A, we're going to set it to negative one because again, left side is the negative side. And when you press A on your keyboard in a first person shooter or a third person shooter game or any game where you control a character with a keyboard, when you press A, you go to the left side. That's why we are setting here negative one for the A key. Make sure that negative one is for the A and not for the D because D is the positive. Now also here, I'm going to click on Plus, and we're going to have turn, not tron. What is tron? Here we're going to have turn like this. And for the turn, we are going to filter for mouse X. So mouse X. And this is for the rotation on the X axis, horizontal rotation. And we're going to click on plus here. This is one more, which is going to be look up. And this one is going to be mouse Y because it is going to allow us to move our rotation up and down. So here I'm going to say mouse Y. And voila, we don't have to save this over here. Everything we do here will be saved automatically. So basically that is that. So we created these action mappings. And in the next video, we are going to start with moving our character. So until then, I will see you in another video. Where else can I see you? Hopefully not in jail. Take care.